Let's go to North Carolina. Cindy, ask me your question. Hi, Susie. I'm really excited to speak to you. Thank you for taking my call. Anytime. My husband and I are in our early 40s. And although we both work full time, I manage most of our finances. And we have separate and joint accounts. We've accumulated around a million, a million three. And now I feel like it's planning our money has exceeded my expertise and in, in time. And so we're thinking of consulting a financial planner. We went to one, and he has told us that he will charge us 1% the first year and half a percent moving forward. And that seems very high to me. So I wanted to see if you had any criteria for when should you start using a financial planner. Now, see, but you're, you're mixing apples and oranges to tell you the truth. There are many financial planners out there. There are certified financial planners. There are fee-based only financial planners. There are registered investment advisors. And they all have different ways of charging money. So the question first is, what will he do for you for that 1%? Did he tell you? Yes, he says he will manage our trusts, um, all of our uh, planning, any kind of life events, estate planning, uh, kind of a soup to nuts planning. And did he give you an example of what he would invest your money in? So obviously you're getting a little bit older. You may want to put some money into bonds. Did he say to you that he would buy individual bonds for you? Now, he did let us know he's an independent uh, planner. He works with the bank, and he, he mentioned that we would make all of those decisions. We do not hand over our, our finances to him, but he will take a look at our, um, all of our investments, our current investments, and make recommendations. So we, he is not investing on our behalf. Um, so, again, that confuses me a little because that's when you start to talk about a discretionary account and one that isn't a discretionary account, meaning that the advisor has his own discretion. He can buy and sell anything he wants without your permission. Most people today have an account with an investment advisor, maybe charging 1%, which is not bad. Half a percent is more in the area with somebody with $1.3 million, just so you know. But that person makes recommendations and then actually invests invest the money for you for what he has recommended. Is that what he is going to do? No, I don't believe that's what it is. Then he I would will... not be using him at all. Listen to me. There are many, many, many great what we call registered investment advisors out there or financial planners or whatever that take your money under management. You put your money in the brokerage firm. It's in a major brokerage firm, hopefully, and that your advisor will tell you, you are to buy this, you are to buy that, you are to buy this, and you give permission to do so. They do not charge commission. They do not charge loads and mutual funds, the ethical ones. They, if you have a bond portfolio, they actually have a separate account that doesn't get charged that 1%. So I don't think the person that's talking to you is somebody that I would feel comfortable with. You want somebody who literally tells you what they would do, they make their money by making money for you, and they literally make those investments for you. Does that make sense? It does make sense because one of my concerns is at least half of that money is in CDs currently, and so I don't feel comfortable handing over five thousand dollars to manage money that's in a cd yeah so something everybody should know and i just want this to be a blanket across the board lesson if you go to somebody who is managing money for you and they're charging you let's say one percent or half a percent it should be only on the money that's for growth it's for the money that's in stocks, the money that's maybe in mutual funds, although I think it should be individual stocks. Any money that's a CD or a bond should be in a separate account where it isn't under an investment advisory fee because every time they buy a bond, they get a commission. So it should be two separate accounts. I have a feeling you need to go see somebody else. At Keith Florian. Is it too much for a financial advisor to be charging 0.09% yearly on my money? I don't think so, as long as that is all he or she is charging. There are many people out there known as registered investment advisors that charge a percentage of money under management, but they do not get commissions. They do not get any other money besides that. The reason that I like when people do that is let's just say you gave a registered investment advisor $100,000. 
if they are being paid 0.09% on the $100,000, Fine. If they take that $100,000 to $300,000, now they're making more money. They're being paid 0.09% on $300,000. But if they take that $100,000 down to $50,000, now they're only being paid 0.09% on $50,000. So you make money, they make more money. You lose money, they make less money. I like how that works. Again, a registered investment advisor, however, should only be in in individual stocks for you, not putting you into mutual funds where there are heavy expense ratios because then you're double paying, or again, they're charging you commissions or loads on mutual funds. 0.09% is not bad, so that's how it works.